So in creating the alignment, it's important, there's a few important things to keep in mind. Um, the alignment serves as the base reference for the bridge. It lets the software know where the bridge is going. So if you set your alignment up with a curve or a change in elevation, the bridge will just follow the alignment curve that you make with the alignment being the center line of the bridge. So, and another important thing that I'm going to demonstrate real quick is that it's important that the alignment is longer than the bridge itself. And the reason for this is because, well, I think it's easier to show. So I created this um, file real quick that I'll just open up just to show you a demonstration about what I'm talking about and why it's important. So I'll just fit to view. So this bridge here, it's not finished, but it's far enough along to show what I'm talking about. So right now, the alignment for this bridge is defined just from this end here to this end here. Now, right now everything looks fine, but if we were to apply a skew to this bridge, say 20 degrees, the girders that extend beyond the alignment disappear. That's because OpenBridge Modeler will not model anything that exists outside of the range of the alignment. So what's important is that you have the alignment extend beyond the end of the bridge so that even if you add in any skews or make any adjustments, your bridge will still be modeled. So just switching back over here. To model or to build the alignment, you'll just come up here to the Civil tab and we'll start with the horizontal alignment. So I just click on this. This is a drop down from lines um, and you can do the line between points or any of these other options. I just click on lines itself and that will default as lines between points. Now, as I said, you need the alignment to go beyond the bridge itself. I, I will call this a buffer zone the buffer alignment zone. And as for the length of that, if you set that to be equal to the width of the bridge, you won't ever run into any problems because even if the skew is at 45 degrees, that would only go half the bridge width out past the end of your bridge. Um, so if you do a full bridge width, no matter what skew you apply, you won't run into any problems. You can do it more. It's just you want to make sure you don't run out of buffer zone. Um, so for this, I will just do 20 meters, because why not? Now, a few things to note is right now, there's no feature definition defined when I'm drawing this line. So if I just, and I notice I locked the distance and the line direction. I can also draw freestyle and then change the, the length and direction later manually, but I prefer just to lock in this information there. So if I click there, click there, at the 20 meters already, but as you notice this is white. That's because I had it set to no feature definition. Eventually we'll need this at the geometry baseline level. So there's a few ways you can do this. One is you can just come into this drop down menu. working, working, working. It come into alignment, road, geometry baseline. And then if you were to enter it in, it's red. That lets you know it's assigned to the geometry baseline level. And for this one here, I didn't enter in a distance or lock it in, so it just drew the distance I drew. I'll just undo that because I don't actually need that in there. Uh, another important thing I'll just point out is you can set a mark which sets the undo buffer. So if you want, it's kind of like setting a save point so you can, when you're playing around, if you can go back to a previous position because otherwise you can only do one thing at a time. The only other option is to undo everything since you open the file or to undo to your mark. So 
setting mark makes it so you can reset the undo buffer without actually you know, closing out the program and reopening your save location. So anyway, um, I just showed that. And another option is if you don't have the geometry baseline set here, and you draw it in, uh, let's just set that to 20 meters again. Just start point, put it in, escape to stop drawing. There is, you can come to complex geometry and set it to the geometry baseline feature. Then when you select it, and then you left click to accept, and it changes it to the geometry baseline level. And the final thing you can do is up here under general tools, you can open up the feature definition toolbar, set the feature definition to level you want to draw, so set to the geometry baseline, turn it on. Um, what this does is it sets it to the active level. So if I come in here to draw a line, it automatically sets to use active feature. So anything I draw, well this is turned on, will be at the geometry baseline level. And this is convenient just so you make sure you're always drawing to geometry baseline level. Um, that way you don't have to worry about forgetting or changing it later. Um, it's not, and another thing you can do is if you draw a whole bunch of stuff and you're like, oh no, I didn't apply it to a level, you can use the complex geometry feature just to switch the it from no feature definition to the geometry baseline. You can also use complex geometry later to combine elements, um, but I'll show that when we get there. Anyway, so I'm just going to reset this just to the beginning before I drew anything, just so I can keep track of where I'm at better. All right, so I have this just set to geometry base on level line. Just gonna lock in the direction and distance. And then even if I draw too short or too long, it locks in right at 20. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm, now that I have this buffer zone here, I'm gonna draw in the span for the bridge. So for this, I have it's 63.064 meters out to out. Now, just a little bit of history, just a little bit of history class right now. So this these bridge plans were for the Idaho Transportation Department. And even though they are from the US of A, um, they are in metric, which many people would find interesting or weird. The reason why this was done is because there's a period of time in the United States history where the federal government was trying to switch the United States over to metric. Didn't work out, but they tried. And the reason, and the way they did that is they made it so anything with federal funding had to be done in metric. So this bridge had a little bit of federal funds coming into it, which is pretty common for bridges because, well, turns out building bridges is expensive. So if you can get federal grants, that's great. Um, so if you have any federal funding in any of these bridges, they had to be done in metric for a few years. So if you get any bridge plans from that time period, you'll find they are in metric, which can be a little bit jarring if you're used to working in the imperial system, but it's, it's most software can work in either imperial or metric. So just make sure you keep in mind and take note of if something's in metric or not. Anyway, enough of history class. So. As I, we saw earlier, that was 63.064 meters. Cool. So I uh, just have the snap is turned on by default. It's just this little option down here, the key point snap. So click there. Boom. And that enters that distance in. And now I just want to enter in buffer zone for the other end. So I want to set that to 20 again, just, you know, to keep it symmetric. And boom push escape to stop drawing and that's all done. Now, right now these are separate segments, but we want them all be th for the software to treat them all as the same. So to do that, you can come up to complex geometry, locate the first element, and notice it does that and it has a little arrow saying, oh, I'm gonna grab this element and then everything in the direction the arrow is pointing. So 
and I can just start here, it only grab these two elements. I'll escape that. So, like, if you have a, t a huge alignment drawn and you only want, like, part of it, you can do that. Um, but we're going to start here at the end, have it grab everything, and then left click to accept. And now if you have over it, it all highlights. And the reason I drew as separate segments, though, is because it still has these little nodes in there where they were separate at the originally. And that will be easy, make it easier to snap into place when I'm drawing in the bridge, which is why I drew them in separate parts and then joined them all into one. Now the next thing is, now that we have this horizontal alignment added in, we'll want to add in the vertical. So to do that, you come up here to Vertical, Open Profile Model, click the Plan Element, and I also want to select a view to draw in. I like to keep my default view 1 and view 2 open, so I'll come down here and open up a view 3 and select in there. That will turn my view 3 into the vertical view. Okay, I'm just going to resize this a bit. All right, so now when drawing in the vertical view, just come, you, you don't want to make sure you don't use the horizontal lines. You want to make sure you use the vertical lines because just the software treats them a little bit differently. And I have it set to geometry baseline by default using the feature definition toggle bar, which is what I want. So I'll come here just to lines, just click on that. And then for when I'm drawing in the vertical view, I personally like to use the AccuDraw rather than the parameters bars. So I will come in here, just set my start point, x to 0, that just says I'm starting at horizontal position 0. And for vertical, if you're just drawing the bridge, the exact vertical isn't terribly important, but it is important that it's greater than 0 by a fair amount. The reason for this is because if you don't import any geometry or terrain, the software assumes zero elevation is the ground elevation. And this can cause problems when you try to add in the abutments if you have your bridge at zero. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put it at 20 meters. 20 meters off the ground. And since I'm only drawing the bridge and it's not going to be relative to anything else in this, in this drawing, that this isn't super important. Um, if you are going to be drawing other things in besides just the bridge, like you're going to be drawing in the alignments for the roadway, or if you're going to be adding in geometry and terrain. Honestly, these things should be added in before you try building the bridge. But even if you want, but if for some reason you want to try to add them in later, it's important that you uh, keep the elevation in mind relative to everything else. But in this, it's just the bridge, so it's no biggie. Anyway, I'm just going to snaps automatically to the end there, which is nice. I'll just click that, boom, and then escape to stop drawing. And now it isn't perfectly flat, so what I'll do is go and click on it, type in zero, push enter, and there, now it's perfectly flat. Now, the important thing to note about the alignment is, as I believe I mentioned earlier, the alignment tells the, the software where the bridge is going. So if you have any curves, if you have any change in elevation, if you have anything weird about the alignment, it's important that you get it entered in first. The reason I bring this up is because most everything in Open Bridge Modeler is really easy to change. Just like you saw me change that the slope. You just click on something, change the number, and everything will auto-update. However, I have noticed in using the software that making adjustments to the alignment after you add in the bridge can be kind of difficult. So just to save yourself a bunch of headache, just make sure you have the alignment exactly where you want it before you start adding in the bridge. But for this example, it's just nice and level, nice and straight. So with that, um, we want to prepare this for receiving the bridge. So the next thing we will do is we will come up to Set Active Profile. And this prepares profiles for well, receiving the bridge. So up in vertical, click Set Active Profile. We'll first want to select this horizontal plan element. And then we'll select the vertical element. And that basically just joins them together. So now when you reference one, it'll automatically, they're, they're tied together as far as the bridge is concerned. 
So now that we have all that tied together, I'm going to turn off the geometry baseline because I'm now going to be drawing bridge elements. I'm closing that out. So now we're ready to draw on the bridge.